What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be building a VR ready PC. Now with the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift set to release in just a few short weeks, you're admittedly going to need a pretty powerful PC to get it up and running with no problems. Now when you go to pre-order the Oculus on their website, they have a minimum spec sheet there so you can see the minimum hardware that you're going to need and able to fully power and run the Oculus Rift. So what we have here today is going to be a little bit more than that. We're not going minimum here because we want to build the best build possible for your money. So the big thing here is going to be the price for the performance. Now, also I wanted to keep in mind something that's going to make this possibly future proof for the next two to three years before you're going to be actually forced to upgrade with all the new hardware coming out. So we have a little bit more than the minimum here. That's going to be good in the long run because you're not going to be spending too much more money than what the minimum is we're going to require. And we're going to be getting a lot more power out of this PC. Now this isn't going to be a build guide. I'm not going to teach you how to build this PC, but more so an in-depth review of each individual piece of hardware that I have here and why we're going to pick it for this VR ready build. And again, just keep in mind price for performance here, but I'll go over that with each thing we talk about. Now the first piece of hardware we're going to talk about is the CPU, arguably the most important parts. And the minimum CPU they require is an i5-4590. But I went with the i5-6600K, and I'll tell you why I recommend this over the 4590. First off, it is 24% faster on a single core, and when you factor in single core, quad core, and multi-core speeds, you can get up to 40% faster on the 6600K versus the 4590K. The 6600K is also a Skylake chipset versus the Haswell for the 4590. And I picked this also because in the future, obviously, Skylake is going to be the norm. You're going to see a lot more uh, compatible motherboards with that. And they're going to be a cheaper price as more CPUs come out. So I figured why not future-proof yourself and go with a Skylake chip over a, you know, kind of phasing itself out Haswell chip for the future. And then when you factor in the price, this is one of the biggest things here. The 6600K comes in around $250. However, when you buy it from where I bought it from, which is Micro Center, you get $50 off. And when you pair it with a compatible motherboard, you get an additional $20 off. So for the 6600K that retails at around $250, I got it for only $200 versus the $150 $4590. And when you're pairing again the price for the performance, the 6600K is a no brainer and it's definitely a great upgrade over the 4590. And you also may be asking, why not use something like the i7-4790K that is stronger and is also compatible with, you know, the Haswell chips at motherboards and DDR3 RAM? Well, again, when you factor in you're the price for the performance, the 6600K is a better option. And you're really not getting that much more uh, performance out of the 4790K uh, factoring in that $100 difference. So I just think, again, minimum keeping the cost down here, the best build for the least money, 6600K is your best option. Next up is the motherboard, and this admittedly is not going to factor too much into your performance, obviously. I went with the Gigabyte H170M D3H board. Um, again, it is DDR4 compatible. It's compatible with my Skylake chipset. It's going to have your basic motherboard features and stuff like that. But what's also cool is that it is M.2 compatible. M.2 is going to give you a much faster storage option uh, versus like SATA 3. And it also has SATA Express, which is around 10 gigabytes per second faster than just SATA 3. This was around $90 to $100, but again, since I paired it with a compatible CPU from Micro Center, I got this for only $70. So we have the CPU, we have the motherboard. What about keeping that cool? Next, we're going to go with the CPU cooler, which is the Dark Rock 3 from Be Quiet. You could also say, why not something like the very cheap and affordable and very popular uh, Evo 212 from Cooler Master? This thing is a monster. And for the price you're getting this thing at, it is going to keep your PC extremely cool when it is, you know, running all those VR programs. And you're not going to have any problems with this thing. It is absolutely solid. It is massive, so the heat sinks on here are considerably going to be much more efficient versus a smaller and cheaper CPU cooler. And for the money at only $90, which is going to be around, you know, like $40 more than the 212 Evo, I would go with this. Better cost for the performance. Next up is going to be the graphics card. And the Oculus website recommends at least a GTX 970 or an AMD equivalent at an R9 to 90. Again, that's what they recommend for the minimum compatibility. We're going to go with a 980 for a few reasons. First up, 980s have dropped in price a ton over the past year or so 
since the 980 Ti came out. And the 980 is going to beat the 970 in pretty much every aspect that matters at a considerable margin. And another big reason I'm recommending the 980 is because of the price. We saw what happened last year when the 980 Ti came out, these dropped, and in just a month or so, they're going to be releasing a new line of the Pascal GPUs, which means another price drop for the 980. So you could pick it up at a greatly discounted price, even on some flash sales or anything like that. For me, I got this at only $400 for this G1 980 graphics card from Gigabyte. I got it brand new on Amazon. So always use your resources, check Amazon, even check eBay, check Newegg for new stuff. I got this, it was, it was an open box, but it was a brand new card. Huge discount, so definitely check around for the best prices possible. Like I said, a great GPU. It's gonna be coming down in price again very shortly, and I got this for $400. If you wanna argue a 980 Ti over this, well again, you're gonna be spending 200 extra dollars just to get that. Yes, you're getting two more gigabytes of video RAM, uh, but I think it's gonna be better off for $200 less. And plus with the 980, you are actually getting a higher clock speed and a higher turbo clock speed as well as a lower power consumption. So this is definitely gonna be your best option for this. Next up is RAM, nothing too flashy here. They recommend eight, I'm going with 16. I have two eight gigabyte sticks of DDR4 RAM from HyperX. This is gonna come in only like $75. Not a bad deal for that. For memory, this is gonna vary from each individual person. I'm using a 480 uh, gigabyte card from HyperX. Again, this is a little SSD, uh, but obviously you can get whatever sort of storage you want. This is gonna come in at a higher price, but you can get a one terabyte Seagate hard drive for only $50. So when it comes to this kind of stuff towards the end of the build, this is where you can start to factor in and play with the extra money that you have left over uh, for all the price. So you, you can definitely get anything on a cheaper end to a higher end, like this SSD for around $200, or a $50 one terabyte hard drive. Next up is power supply. I'm going with the 750 watts P2 Nova from EVGA. I went with that because it is fully modular. No, you're not gonna even touch anywhere close to 750 watts. So you could easily get away with a 650 and save some money, but it was only $75. And then lastly is the case. And again, just like your power supply and your choice of storage, uh, this is where you can kind of, you know, use the extra money you have left over or spend more if you want a higher end build. Uh, but I'm going with the Silent Base 600 from Be Quiet as well. This, uh, this case itself is only gonna be around $140, but for an ATX build, you can easily spend anywhere from 50 to 150 on a case. Um, I went with this because it's a nice solid case, it's got, uh, you know, just a great layout. And they use a special sound absorption material on the inside. So it's going to keep my PC, everything I have here, nice and quiet, as well as at low temps. So for $1,100, again, give or take around $100, depending on the sales and stuff like that, and the discounts you can take advantage of, I highly recommend to use your resources to save the most money possible. But for the cost, this is going to be hands down the best build possible to be VR ready. Now, if you have any extra money left over, if you really don't have a budget, I would recommend, if anything, upgrading your graphics card from a 980 to a 980 Ti. But like I said, I'm going with the 980 because it's gonna give you the best performance for the price that we're spending. So now I'm gonna get it all built up and we're gonna see the final results. We're gonna download Steam. And it's gonna clarify that we are, in fact, VR ready to get running with the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. All right, so we got this VR PC built up with no problems at all, but I went ahead and downloaded Steam, obviously. Then I downloaded the Steam VR performance test. You can check how well your PC is and how well it's gonna be compatible with these VR devices coming out. So we're gonna run it and see how good this thing can handle it. All right, so this is the VR performance test. It runs it in this little emulated window that's kind of playing the sequence from a uh, portal here. So you can see it has the two like little goggle things that's gonna be on your screen for when you're playing or using your Oculus Rift or your HTC Vive. But this is the test and just like that, we are done. And look at that, it is telling us we are more than ready. Uh, obviously red is gonna mean not ready at all. Yellow is capable, which is what you're gonna see if you do own a um, like a 9 a 970 or an R9 290 but since we went ahead and got the 980 we are 
almost at the peak right here. So we are gonna be more than fine. Uh, right here, I'll probably throw, like, I'll throw a little overlay on the screen. But you can see we can go to show details and it'll tell us more information about our, our, our little test results here. And down below, the main thing that is most important is your frames below 90 FPS. Since all uh, VR games are gonna run at 90, you are gonna want that to be at zero. And guess what? We did. Zero frames under 90. That is awesome. So everything ran just fine here. We got more than uh, more than pleasurable results. And again, this is all from our build with a GTX 980 and the i5-6600K CPU. All right, guys, you saw the results. We are more than ready to be up and running with VR. Zero frames under 90 FPS. And we are pretty much all the way to the top of the bar, which means this PC can handle any VR with zero problems. Now, as I've reiterated numerous times throughout this video, yes, you can probably get cheaper parts and still be okay. And yes, you can get better components, but you're still gonna be spending money. This guide, this PC build right here is gonna be the best build guide for you by the best components for the most affordable amount here. So yes, you can buy a better graphics card, just so you can get a higher CPU, but all the parts that we have in this video is gonna be the best price for the performance we're getting. Yes, we could have gotten a cheaper uh, graphics card, but we would, we would not be anywhere where we are now in these VR results. So I hope this video helped you out, and for around $1,000, you can be up and running with no problems at all and run all your VR games on the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive with zero problems. And also, don't forget, check the description down below where I have all the parts listed in case you want to check it out. And also, don't forget, take advantage of your resources, look for sales, be on the lookout for any special deals, all that good stuff. If you like this video and it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. You can follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And lastly, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.